Okay. Welcome students, welcome to lecture number 36, where we will be continuing with module number 5 and the subject financial management. So under this module, we have completed almost everything. We are just left with the estimation of working capital requirement of the firm and case study on working capital determination. So today, we will be covering estimation of working capital requirement of firm and case study on working capital determination. So with this, we will be completing this module number five. So let us understand how do we determine the working capital. So students, working capital is nothing but current assets minus current liabilities. Okay. So the remaining then, yes. Ma'am, screen is not visible. It's visible. So now, is it visible? Is it not visible? What is the? Is this visible to everyone? Is this presentation visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. Okay, then let us continue. So we were doing determination of working capital. Now, how do you calculate working capital? We know that the formula to calculate working capital is nothing but current assets minus current liabilities. Okay, this is a formula. Now, excess of current assets over current liabilities will give you the working capital and this capital is nothing but which is required for the day-to-day -day working of the organization. So under current, so let us know what all falls under current assets and what all falls under current liabilities. You will already know it because you will have covered it in your first semester, but just we will revise it. So under current assets, we have stock, we have debtors, cash in hand, cash at bank, prepaid expenses, accounts receivables, or bills receivables. Under current liabilities, we have creditors, bills payable, outstanding expenses, short-term loans, and short-term provisions. So students, when any problem is given to you all, you all should first be able to, you know, separate or you segregate what are the current assets, what are the current liabilities, take the total minus the two, you get the working capital. So for that, it is very important for you all to know the meaning of current assets. Current assets are those assets that can be quickly converted into cash for a period of one year or they are Within a period of one year, if they can be converted into cash, they are current assets. And current liabilities are which can which are repayable within a period of one year. Next, estimation of working capital requirement of a firm. Now, with the perspective of solving the problems, with an intention of solving the problems, how the format is supposed to be. This is how the format is supposed to be. Okay. So first, you have to take the current assets. You have to write particular rupees, two, two columns. First, you have to write the current assets. So below current assets, you need to write all the assets like cash, debtors, bills receivable, stock, prepaid expenses. Then take the total current assets. Okay. Then you write the current liabilities. That is creditors, outstanding expense, bills, table. Or if there is any other current liabilities apart from what is mentioned in this particular format, you can include those current liabilities also, like short-term provisions, okay, short-term loans. All those also has to be included. Then you take the total of total current liabilities. You take the total. So first, what you're supposed to do? Solve it vertically. Vertically means first take the current assets. Write down all the current assets given in the problem. Take the total of it. Second, take the current liabilities. Write all the current liabilities. Take the total of it. Okay. Minus the total of current assets with the total of current liabilities. So minus A minus B. So when you do A minus B, you get the working capital. Okay. Next, add provisions margins for contingencies see students we know that current assets minus current liability will give you working capital but sometimes what happens unexpected something happens contingencies means which you have not estimated something unusual happens for which you require some amount additional amount see for example now like uh, last to last year, there were floods which have taken place. So many organizations, you know, they were not aware that floods will take place and their business will be hampered, working capital will be hampered. Correct. It wasn't contingency. It was not predicted. Right. So 
they only determine the working capital they only show current assets minus current liabilities so much amount they kept aside but always the organization has to keep some more amount aside as a margin for contingency so contingencies means for some unseen future like for something which is not predictable like any extra loss which happens in the organization maybe for some reasons which is not known ahead okay for that you just keep some money aside or some margin aside okay when you add this amount of margin to the working capital you require net working capital required will be your final answer so students working capital we know is current assets minus current liabilities but you have to add certain contingencies that is certain provision of margin for contingency suppose some unpredicted event happens so then uh, and you require extra money extra capital then you have it once you have made the provision for it so for working capital you add the provisions of margin for contingency you get the net working capital required so did everyone understand this format okay and why we have added the provision of margin for contingencies is it clear to everyone yes so that the company do not fall short of any amount okay in case some unexpected event occurs so the company is working should not get hampered or the uh, you know with shortage of capital working capital that is why margin for contingencies is being added to the working capital in order to get the net working capital required is this particular format clear to everyone yes students yes is this format clear is it clear to everyone okay few students yes ma'am few students were waiting that is the reason i had to go back okay next there are certain important points to be considered when we consider when you have to solve the problems students so when you solve the problems there are certain points that you have to always keep in mind okay let us see what are those points so while calculating the amount of work in progress see students when does work in progress comes when it is a manufacturing unit okay the stock is divided into raw material work in progress and finished goods correct so when work in progress happens see students let me tell you when you purchase the raw materials it is only the materials that you are purchasing but when that raw material is converted into work in progress now on that raw materials who is going to work the labor is going to work the man is you know employee is going to work to convert that raw material into work in progress so in work in progress raw material will be there labor who is working on it and apart from labor working from it obviously labor will use electricity correct labor will use some fuel some machinery if it wants to convert the raw material into finished goods so that is overheads over overhead is nothing but all indirect expenses like you can say all the additional expenses which are required in converting the raw material into work in progress so obviously in raw material state there will be only materials involved but when there is work in progress there will be labor also involved in that because labor is going to help converting the raw material into work in progress then there will be indirect expenses also involved there will be electricity expenses there will be fuel expenses whatever additional spare parts are required those expenses which will differ from product to product so obviously there will be certain indirect expenses involved which is called as overheads and labor also will be involved when work in progress is coming into picture therefore if work in if while calculating amount of work in progress if overhead and labor is given always take it at 50% completion unless specifically mentioned in the problem see students what is this point telling us that when you are calculating work in progress in any problem so whatever amount of overheads is given or labor is given just take 50% of that because what happens is up to work in progress only 50% is been completed then from work in progress to finished goods the rest is been 
completion is going to take place. Therefore, what they're telling is whenever you solve problem, take the indirect expenses and labor always at 50% completion. Because if finished goods is a last stage, work in progress is where your goods are not yet finished converting themselves into finished goods. Okay. So this is the first point that you have to keep in mind while solving the problem. Second point is depreciation should not be included in overheads amount. So as I told you, different expenses will be involved in converting the raw material into finished goods. So do not consider depreciation that time. So when in problem they give you several expenses, not what they're telling in this expense, please do not consider depreciation. So depreciation should not be included. Third, second point is finished goods and debtors are to be taken at cost excluding depreciation. See students, they are telling while well, calculating amount of work in progress, you have to take the labor and overheads at 50%. And when you take this overheads, you do not include the depreciation. Second, what they're telling is finished goods and debtors are to be taken at cost excluding depreciation. Now students, let me tell you, once the goods uh, from raw material stage, they do go to the work in progress stage, then they go to the finished goods stage. Now, what will be the cost of finished goods, students? So, whatever cost you have incurred taking from raw material to the, uh, you know, uh, finished goods stage, that will be the cost. So, always you are going to consider finished goods and debtors at cost and not at selling price. This is very important. Do not consider. You know, when when does the selling price come into picture? Then on the cost, you add the profit margin, then you get the selling price, correct? And at selling price, you sell it to the customers. But for the purpose of working capital, you have to take finished goods and debtors at cost and not at selling price. But this cost also should be excluding depreciation. This is the second point which you need to keep in mind. Third point is the amount payable to creditors will be the cost of raw materials. Obviously, because the creditors are per persons from whom we are going to purchase goods. Correct. So the cost of the raw materials, that will be the amount payable to the creditors. Fourth point, profit should be ignored while calculating working capital. This I have already told you all or explained you all now that do not consider profit while calculating working capital. Just ignore the profit if any given in the problem. Stock and debtor should be taken at cost. So it should be taken at cost and not at selling price. So this five points I have made because be, if you keep in mind all these five points, you can easily solve the problem. Okay, I will explain this now. Now we will be doing the problems at that time. I will be explaining these points again. Okay, but keep in mind these problems when we solve the, uh, keep in mind these points when we solve the problems. So just remember, work in progress, labor and indirect, uh, indirect costs, you're going to take it at 50%. Okay, depreciation should always be excluded. If we consider that cost, profit should be ignored. So these are the points that we need to remember for working capital. Next, now let us do some on determination of working capital. Is this screen visible? Is this window visible to everyone? What document visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, why this is a sum from question paper 2014. A project report on behalf of a client you are you have collected the following facts estimate the net working capital required they're just not asking you gross working capital they are asking you net working capital which means current assets minus current liabilities add contingencies then you will get net working capital required then they are telling you add 10 percent to your computed figure to allow contingency so here they have given you rate 10% has to be added. So now let us see what all information has been given. Estimated cost per unit of production. So obviously it is a manufacturing unit because cost per unit of production. So by this we come to it is a manufacturing unit. 
So here we will have raw material, work in progress, and finished goods. We'll have all three. So raw material production per unit is rupees eighty per unit. Direct labor is rupees thirty per unit. Overhead, excluding depreciation of rupees ten per unit. So excluding depreciation, it is rupees sixty per unit, and depreciation is rupees ten. So in this ten. Rupees is not included because it is excluding depreciation. So total cash cost is coming up to one seventy rupees. So total cost is one seventy rupees. Now selling price is two hundred rupees. That is cost is one seventy. Selling price is two hundred means thirty rupees is the profit. But profit we need not consider while solving for okay, capital. Next. Level of activity means how many units were actually produced, or what is the level of units produced? That is one lakh four thousand. So per unit cost is given students, and total one lakh four thousand units to be produced per annum. Now raw material are in stock for average four weeks. So this operating cycle for raw material is four weeks. Okay. Next. Work in progress. Assume fifty percent completion stage in respect of conversion cost and hundred percent completion in respect of materials. As I told you, fifty percent for conversion cost. Now, students, what is the meaning of conversion cost? Students, for converting the raw material into work in progress, what is the cost? Additional cost that you are going to Incur for converting the raw materials from raw materials to work in progress. So, can anyone tell me what are the two costs which will come into picture, or which is going to help in converting the raw materials into work in progress? What are the two things or two costs? See, from raw material stage, if you have to bring the goods into work in progress stage, what are the two costs involved? For the conversion, how will you convert the raw material into work in progress? Yes, yes, students. You will require labor, and you will require overheads. That is indirect expenses. So conversion cost is nothing but cost that is going to help in converting the raw material into work in progress. So how the materials are going to get converted with the help of the labor and with the help of overheads. So conversion cost is nothing but direct labor and overheads. Next, credit allowed by suppliers is four weeks. Finished goods in stock is for four weeks. Credit allowed to debtors is for eight weeks. Lag in payment of wages is one point five weeks. Cash at bank is expected to be twenty five thousand. Okay, you may assume that production is carried on evenly throughout the year. That is fifty two weeks are given, and wages and overheads accrue similarly. So all sales are on credit basis only. So they are telling calculate work capital. So what we have to do is take the current assets from the problem minus the current liabilities. You will get the working capital required. So first we go into raw materials because stock. You know, for a manufacturing unit, stock is a current asset. Under stock, we have raw material, work in progress, finished goods. Now stock is rupees eighty per unit. So what will be the total cost of stock, students? What is the level of activity? It is one lakh four thousand. So what will be the total Cost in respect of raw materials. What is the value of raw materials? I am supposed to take in current assets. Yes, students. Eighty is for per unit, and how many units are getting produced? One lakh four thousand. So, how much I should take, students? Yes. What is going to be the value of raw material? I am supposed to take per unit cost is rupees eighty. Eighty lakh twenty thousand. Okay, eighty-three lakh twenty thousand. But they are telling raw material in stock is for average four weeks. So what I have to in four divided by fifty-two. This we have done right operating cycle in our previous lecture. Okay, so the average what you have is correct. But further calculation is raw materials in stock is only for average period of four weeks, and they are telling. See, last time what we had done is in days. It can be in days, week. 
only in four weeks is the stock of raw materials and they're telling consider 52 weeks in a year so what will be the answer or value of raw materials six lakh forty thousand yes six lakh forty thousand very good see here six lakh forty thousand so raw material what you have done is 80 into one four thousand but it is your average period of only four weeks so you have taken into four divided by 52 you got six lakh forty thousand okay we have been raw material next direct labor that uh, sorry next work in progress okay because for a manufacturing unit under stock you get uh, raw material in Finished. What all will come in work in progress, students? I told you in work in progress there will be three cost involved. Ek to in work in progress, there will be material, there will be direct labor, there will be overheads. And direct labor and overheads, you have to always take 50%. And here it is given 50% completion stage in respect of conversion or conversion. So in work in progress. Three things will be there materials, direct labor, overheads. Is this actually is this thing clear by taking these three things in work in progress? Yes, students. Have you all understood the logic that in work obviously in work in progress, your materials don't leave at raw material stage and in work in progress, you're going to actually work on the materials, right? So work in progress will have raw materials, which is no doubt in that. Plus, direct labor is involved, converting that raw material into finished goods. And obviously, overhead means other expenses also are involved. Is that clear? Yes, students. So, in work in progress, taking 100% completion in respect of materials means for materials, you take 100% value. So, raw material will be 80 into 1 lakh 4,000 because 4,000 units have been produced. The per unit cost is 80. So you have taken 80 into 1 lakh 4,000. But here, what is the material average period? See here, work in progress average is for 2 weeks. So what you have to do into 2 divided by 52. You, you get 11. Is this part clear to everyone? See, always remember work in progress will be divided at three stages. That is raw material, direct labor, overhead. Raw material will be taken 100% of the price that is given. Direct labor and overhead will be taken only 50% of the cost what is given. Is this raw material called calculation and work in progress? Yes, students. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, now we have to take direct labor. Now, direct labor should we take full 30 rupees or should we take half of 30 rupees? Because they are telling assume 50 percent complete stage in respect of conversion cost. Conversion cost is direct labor, we know, and overheads. So, 30 only 50 uh, percent of 30, so that is half of 30 is the thing. 15. So you have to take 15 rupees as the cost of direct labor for work in progress into the units produced. Units produced is 1 lakh 4,000 into average period for work in progress is 2 weeks. So into 2 divided by 52. So we get direct labor at 60,000. Next, overheads. Overheads also you have to take 50%, excluding depreciation. So in my slide here, now you will be able to understand that if overheads and working progress given, always take it 50% completion means whatever cost is given, you only take 50% of that cost. Okay. And depreciation amount should not be included in overheads amount. So if the overheads is 30, it's already excluding depreciation means depreciation is not included in that 60. So by default, it is excluded. So nothing has to be done. So you are going to take only 50 percent 60 that is 30,000 into 1 lakh 2,000 into 2 divided by 52 you get 1 lakh 20,000 the total of these three will be the total amount of work in progress this lakh is this clear students yes is work in progress calculation clear to everyone yes ma'am okay now comes the raw material is done 
what in progress calculation done next is finished goods now here i told you finished goods are to be taken at cost so finished goods we to be taken at cost excluding depreciation so this 170 is the total cost it is already excluding depreciation 170 so your finished goods will be 1000 into 170 and finished goods are in stock for four weeks so it will be one lakh it will be one lakh seventy sorry seven into one lakh four thousand into four by fifty two because finished goods is always to be taken at cost so see your students finished goods one lakh seventy in sorry not one lakh seventy one seventy into one lakh four thousand into four divided by fifty two you got thirteen thousand 13,60,000. Yes, students. Is finished course calculation clear? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next is debtors also is your current assets, right? And they are given here credit allowed to debtors is for average eight weeks. Okay. Now, so I have told you, see students here, finished goods and debtors are to be taken at cost, excluding depreciation. So obviously what you will do, 1,4,000 into 170 into 8 divided by 52. So you get the amount of debtors as 27,20,000. Next is cash at bank, that is 25,000. So cash at bank, no calculation, directly 25,000 is taking. So you're getting total current assets as 52 lakhs 45,000. So this, why I, have, why, have, why I have made these points that, because if you remember the point, you can easily solve the problems. Now, is this clear up to total current assets? Is this clear? Can you find any other current assets apart from what we have taken? Yes, students? Yes. Now let us find the current liabilities. Now in current liabilities, you have your creditors because see here, credit allowed by suppliers, you have creditors. And lag in payment of wages. So this lag in payment means there is a delay in payment of wages. So it is called outstanding wages. So outstanding wages is outstanding. Is it your current liability or current asset? Yes, students. Yes, students. Outstanding expenses. Is it your current liabilities or current assets? Current liabilities. Okay. So that current liability, you will be having creditors and outstanding expense. Oh, sorry, outstanding wages. Now, let us first find the creditors. Now, students see your creditors. We in a creditors. Where is that point? Third point, the amount payable to creditors will be the cost of raw materials. So what you have to do is, what is the cost of raw materials? It is rupees 80 per unit. So what you have to do is 80 into 1,4,000. And what is the average period of credit is given? It allowed by supplier is four weeks. So into four divided by 52. So you get creditors at 6,40,000. Next, you have to see is outstanding overheads. Now, you will tell me, students, wages is given to whom? To whom do, does a company give wages? What is the meaning of wages and to whom does a company give wages? Yes, students. Students are there. To whom are we, we, wages given? Yes. Labor. Yes. To, to whom wages given? I didn't hear. I couldn't hear you. What did you say? From labor. Very good. Wages is given to so the delay in making payment of wages. So your labor we know is rupees thirty per unit. They had to be given, but there was a delay. Correct. So it is given to the labor. So how much they had to pay per unit into 1,4,000 into 30. And what is the delay period? 1.5 weeks divided by 52 weeks. So we will see here. 
outstanding overheads you can name it as outstanding labor outstanding wages so 30 into 1 lakh 4000 into 1.5 divided by 50 to your 3000 so total current liability you got is 6 lakh 40 plus 90000 that is 7 lakh 30000 so your net working capital is a minus b that is your total minus total current liabilities that is 52 lakhs 45,000 minus 7 lakh 30,000 you got 45 lakhs 15,000 now to this you're going to add contingencies that is some provision they are telling make a provision of 10% contingency so you're going to add 10% of the gross working capital this is gross working capital students so 10% of so 10% of 45 lakh 15,000, you got 4 lakh 7,500. When you add this to, you get the net working capital required, which is 49,500. 49, is this clear to everyone? Is this problem clear to everyone? Yes, students. Just you'll have to remember if manufacturing unit. Take raw material as it is. In work in progress, take three sub cost that is raw material, direct labor, overheads. Material always take at 100% cost. Direct labor, overhead take at 50% cost. Then take finished goods. Finished goods will always be at the total cost. Take debtors. Debtors will always be at the total cost. Then, depending on any other current asset that is given, cash in bank, cash at the hand, take that amount accordingly. Then for direct for current liabilities, you have to take creditors and creditors always be taken the value or cost of raw materials. Then do current assets minus current liabilities, add contingency, you will get net working capital required. Is this problem clear to everyone? Yes, students. Is this problem clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let us move ahead. Okay. Now, this is a problem from question paper 2015. You are given the following estimates and are instructed to calculate the average amount of working capital will be required after adding 10% to your computed figure to allow contingencies. Okay. Now, Stock of finished goods, 5,000. Stock, stock of stores and materials, 8,000. Okay, for the year it is given. For year, average credit given for inland sales, inland sales, domestic sales within the country. It is six weeks credit that is given as 3,12,000. Export sales, 1.5 credit that is 78,000 okay average time lag in payment of wages and other outgoings there is a lag lag in payment means outstanding expenses which are not yet paid so there is wages which is not yet paid stock and materials rent and royalties clerical staff major expenses miscellaneous expenses so all these are not yet paid so students all these expenses Will it outstanding lag in payment? Will it come in current asset or current liability? Anyone tell me that the pay, the lag in payment that is outstanding expenses where there has become a delay in payment, all expenses do they come in current liabilities or current assets? Yes, students. Current liabilities. Very good. Can anyone tell me? That is stock, stocks of finished goods. Stock, does it come in current liability, current asset? Current asset. Okay, next, stock of stores and material. Will it come in current liability, current asset? Students? Yes? Current asset very good now average credit given see whenever you're giving sales whenever you're making on credit 
it is nothing but debtors it gives rise to debtors correct because debtors is a person from whom we have to receive the money and whenever you are purchasing something on credit it gives to creditors but whenever you are selling something on credit so these two are nothing but debtors because this is a credit sales it gives rise to debtors so is debtors your current assets or current liabilities yes yes students current asset very good see now we have segregated entire question into current asset current liabilities now what we have to do just fix in all the current assets and the current assets fix in all the current liabilities and the current liabilities minus the two at tension contingency you will get your answer so now let us start okay see current assets as you all only told me stock of finished goods is a current asset directly or written 5000 years you all told me stock of raw materials and stock of stores and material comes under current asset directly 8000 why directly or written here no uh, average period is not given you have to directly and here it is not a manufacturing unit therefore they did not give us raw material work in progress finished goods so directly finished goods is coming to picture next sales on credit gives rise to debtors therefore inland sales it is 3 lakh 12000 but the credit period is 6 weeks so when it is 6 sorry we do 3 lakh 12000 into 6 divided by 52 okay that is 36000 And export sales is one point five weeks. That is seventy eight thousand. Then seventy thousand into one point five divided by fifty two. You got twenty two fifty. That is two thousand two fifty. Take this total. You get the total current assets as thousand fifty. So all this we had to cover under current assets, which we have covered. Now comes the current liabilities. So outstanding wages, outstanding stock and materials, out rent and It is clerical staff, manager, and insulinist. So, how we have to solve it, students? Take current liabilities, write their outstanding expenses. Under that, all this will come. So, take that amount of expense into the credit period that is given. So, see, students, wages. The total cost is two lakh sixty, but the number of uh, time lag is one point five weeks. So, what you have to do? Two lakh sixty into one point five divided by fifty two. Similarly, for outstanding stock and material expenses, you have to take forty eight thousand into one point five divided by fifty two. Similarly, for rent and royalties, it is ten thousand, but it is in months, students. So, when it is months, you have into twelve. When it is week, you have to take fifty two. When it is days, you have to take suppose it is seven days. Seven by three sixty five. So this. in exam you have to carefully see times you will miss to see the months weeks and then simply divided by the wrong figure remember it is weeks divided by 52 months divided by 12 so all many months so 10000 into 6 by 12 62400 into 0.5 divided by 12 4800 into 0.5 divided by 12 similarly 40000 to 0.5 divided by Oh, sorry into 1.5 divided by 12 so see that is what we have done here we have got this answer so the total current liability is into 27 300 so what we have done total current assets minus total current liabilities we have got the net working capital 23950 to that we have added 10% contingency that is 23950 to 10% we have got 2395 so working capital required is 26345 is this clear to everyone is this problem clear to everyone students in a previous problem it was many chain unit now this is a trading unit so we have seen problem on manufacturing unit solving and on uh, trading unit also how do we solve it see is the second problem clear to everyone yes students yes ma'am okay now in this problem we have seen excluding depreciation now
Yes, students. Am I audible? Yes. Students, am I audible to you all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, students. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry for the inconvenience. Just continue. Okay, so we had complete. Is, is problem number two clear to everyone? Yes, students? Is the second problem clear to everyone? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let us move ahead to problem number three. Okay, so problem number three is similar to problem number one. The only difference is depreciation here is included. So you have to just minus depreciation from overheads. So let us read this problem. This problem is from question paper 2016. So while the screen is not visible. Ma'am, screen is not visible. Okay, yes, just uh, just give me a moment. Now is the screen visible, students? Yes. Is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can we move ahead with problem number three? Yes, students. Students, is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, yes. let us, so let us move ahead. While preparing a project report on behalf of the client who have collected the following facts, raw materials is rupees 80 per unit, direct labor 30 per unit, overheads. This rupees 20 depreciation is included, students. It is included. So you have to obviously exclude it. Total cost is 180. Add profit 20, selling price is 200. Okay. Production unit is given 1 lakh 4000. Uh, raw materials are in stock for days. Now, if it is 30 days, is given means you have to divide it by 365. Or if they have mentioned any specific number of days in the year, then you have to use that. Okay. Work in progress is 15 days. Assume 100% completion in respect of raw materials and 50% in respect of conversion cost. Conversion cost will be your direct labor and overheads. And for raw material detailing, take full 80 rupees. And for conversion cost, just take 30, half of the cost of direct labor and overheads. Finished goods are in stock for 30 days. Credit allowed by supplier is 30 days. Credit, credit allowed to debtors is 60 days. Lack in payment of overheads is 15 days. Cash at bank is expected to be 25,000. You may assume that the production is carried out through uh, carried evenly throughout the year. See, they're telling don't consider 365 here. They're telling consider 360 days. So suppose if it is specifically mentioned 360 days, consider 360 days. If nothing mentioned, consider 365. Okay, and estimate the net working capital for the project and add 10% to your computed figure to allow contingency. So this is the problem. It is same to problem number one, but only your depreciation, which is included when taking the overheads, you have to minus the depreciation. That is the only difference. So let us solve it. You know the format is current assets minus current liabilities add contingency. Now, in current assets, you know, raw materials will come. Okay. Now, what is the total raw material cost? It is 80 per unit. What is the number of units? 1,4,000. Raw materials are in stock for 30 days. So, it will be 80 into 1,4,000 into 30 divided by 360. You get the amount of raw material. Next, in work in progress, they are telling you, I told you, work in progress, three things will come. That is raw material, direct labor and overheads. So raw material you have to take fully at 
complete cost so raw material cost is 80 what is the work in progress period 15 days so you have to take 80 into 1 lakh 4000 into 15 divided by 360 now direct labor students direct labor cost is 30 but for in for work in progress tell me students direct labor full you will take 100 percent or you will take only 50 percent for direct labor only you will take complete 50%. so 50 of 30 is how much 15 rupees 15. 15 so what you will do so what you will do 15 into 1 lakh 4000 into 15 divided by 360 because work in progress the period is only 15 days so into 15 divided by 360 next is overhead students now for overheads will you consider depreciation or will exclude depreciation see student this is including depreciation 70 is including depreciation correct now should we exclude depreciation first yes or no yes students See students, depreciation is always to be excluded. But in this 70, depreciation has been included. So first you will minus depreciation. So from 70, when you first remove the depreciation, what is the balance you are left with? What is the balance overhead cost? Yes, students? 50. Yes, 50. Now, in work in progress should you take overheads completely the 100 percent or only 50 percent of the amount only 50 percent of the cost you have to take excluding depreciation so excluding depreciation the answer is 50 and out of 50 rupees you have to take only 50 percent of 50 that is 25 so therefore it is 25 into 1 lakh 4 thousand into 15 divided by 360 working must be is there your c students in overhead cost depreciation is included therefore first we have to exclude the depreciation so 70 minus 20 we that is rupees 50 we have excluded correct now after excluding we know in work in progress the conversion cost has to be taken not at 100 percent that is completely 50 you have to not take you have to take 50 percent of 50 so that is rupees 25. Therefore, overhead cost under work in progress will be 25. Is that clear? Yes, students. Is it clear? Up to here, is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yes, students. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, finished goods. Finished goods is always to be taken at cost. Correct? Now, in this cost, depreciation is included. So, first you have to minus the depreciation. So, 180 minus 20 rupees. That is 160 rupees. So, 160 into 1 lakh 4000 and finished goods, the period is given as 30 days. Therefore, into 30 divided by 360, you get the amount of finished goods. Next is debtors. Debtors is again has to be taken at cost therefore 160 into 1 lakh 4 thousand what is the amount of debtors given here credit allowed to debtors is 60 days so into 60 divided by 360 cash in cash in uh, bank is given as 25 thousand therefore you have directly taken here it as 25 thousand you got the total current assets as 53,998,333. Now in current liabilities, you have creditors and outstanding wages. Creditors, students, is to be taken at the cost of raw material. And we know the cost of raw material is 80. And what is the time period of creditors given? Credit allowed by supplier is 30, 30 days. Therefore, you have taken... 80 into 1 lakh 4 thousand into 30 divided by 360 as creditors now outstanding wages here it is given sorry not wages it is lag in payment of overheads is given as 15 days so lag in payment of overheads is given as 15 days here overheads is given as 70 which is including depreciation students so you have to exclude depreciation 
So from 70, when we minus depreciation, we get 50 into 1 lakh 4,000 into 15 divided by 360. You get total outstanding overheads. So current asset minus current liabilities, you will get net working capital, which is 44 lakhs 88,333. To that, you are adding 10% contingency. You're getting your net working capital required. So what we have done in this problem in our first problem, it was excluding depreciation. So we need not bother. But here it was including depreciation. So we had to exclude depreciation while calculating overheads. We had to exclude depreciation while calculating cost. Okay. And we had to exclude uh, for lag in payment of overheads. Again, we had to exclude depreciation. Because in calculation of work in progress, we have to exclude depreciation and do not include it. So is problem number three clear to everyone? Problem number three is similar to problem number one. Only difference was their depreciation was excluded. So we need not, we had to not do additional working. Your depreciation was included. Therefore, our additional working was to just exclude the depreciation. Is problem number three clear to everyone, students? Yes. Yes, students. Is problem number three clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So thank you so much, students. We are done with the class for today. The remaining problems we'll solve in the next class.